Ashley Bach searched her whole life for recognition of the harm suffered after she was taken from her mother at birth. My biological family tried to adopt me um, and bring me home, and they were denied because of uh, the lack of resources on reserves. No amount of money can change the past, but she's hopeful it can make some difference for the future. Compensation will enable people to, uh, to, to address their own needs and do what they need to reconnect and do what they need to um, not just survive, but like thrive. The federal government is offering $40 billion, the largest ever proposed class action settlement in Canada. Historic injustices require historic reparations. $20 billion to compensate First Nations children on reserve and in the Yukon, removed from their homes over the past 31 years. Parents and caregivers would also be compensated as would any child denied services, such as accessing medical equipment under Jordan's principle. I acknowledge your pain and your loss, the loss of time and, a fam and family life with your siblings. I'm sorry you didn't, didn't have that. No, we're going to do it together. The remaining $20 billion is for long-term reform, including an independent review of Indigenous Services Canada and support for youth aging out of care. Youth in care have been courageously advocating for decades to say, you know what, when we turn 18, don't just turn us out onto the streets. The tentative deal could end a 15-year legal battle. Once finalized, the government says it will drop an appeal of a federal court ruling upholding a landmark Canadian Human Rights Tribunal order. It called on the government to pay $40,000 to each affected First Nations child and caregiver. This sets the foundation um, nicely to end the discrimination and racism. Okay, so Olivia, under this deal, how much is each affected First Nations child and family expected to get? Well, Andrew, the federal government says everyone covered by this agreement is expected to get at least $40,000 and potentially more based on a formula they still have to develop for compensation. The parties have agreed to negotiate these final details until the end of March. Then the agreement has to go before the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal and federal court for final approval. The parties are hopeful this will all be sorted out by the end of this year so compensation can start flowing to an estimated 200,000 people. Okay. Olivia, thank you. You're welcome.